Amen. Come on, let's just take a moment right here to just worship the Lord. Give me some volume, please. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Work on it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I came running when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, let's just lift up our hands for a moment right here. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this space and this moment in time. We thank you for being God all by yourself. God, thank you for all that we've seen and all that we've heard to this point. We continue to honor you, God, in our worship, even as we prepare, God, to break open the bread of life. We give you first place. We commit our ways unto you. God, if it had not been for you on our side, our enemy would have swallowed us up. So we honor you today, God. We thank you for those who have gathered physically in this place. God, we thank you for those who have gathered even in our virtual congregation. Now we ask you, Holy Spirit, speak in this place. Speak expressively. Speak with clarity and simplicity. Holy Spirit, speak to the heart of the people of God. Save the unsavable, reach the unreachable, touch the untouchable, God. We move us out of the way. Less of us and more of you. We decree none of us and all of you. We commit our ways unto you now. Every man, woman, and child, God, we bind distractions, we bind hindrances. God, everything that would prevent us from receiving what you have for us today, we cast it aside right now. We say, have your way. Somebody say, have your way, Lord. Somebody say, Lord, you know what I need. Speak to my heart. I'm ready to hear. If it's correction, I'm ready. If it's directions, I'm ready. Call me to the place you need me to be so I could be all you've ordained for this season. I give up my will for your will my desires for your desires and I decree and declare that I am one with you right now in Jesus name if you believe that clap your hands and give God some praise hallelujah hallelujah come on bless him in his place come on and bless the Lord come on and bless the Lord come on and bless the Lord hallelujah we give you glory, God. We give you glory. We give you glory, God. We give you glory. We give you glory, God. We give you glory. We give you glory, God. We give you glory, God. We give you glory. Ah, yes. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. Ah, yeah. We give you glory, God. We give you glory, God. God is trying to shift us to where he needs us to be so that he can do what he's ordained to do for us in this season. See, a lot of us are going to miss God because we're, 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 we're coming to God, but we're not coming ready. We got to show up ready. Somebody say you got to show up ready. You don't show up to get ready. You show up ready. So whatever I'm dealing with, whatever I have, I'm bringing that with me. But I'm coming in, I'm entering into the presence of the Lord. Because there's something that I need from God. And I'm not coming empty. I'm bringing my anxieties. I'm bringing my issues. But I'm coming with a worship. I'm coming with a praise. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, I'm bringing my praise. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits. If I want the presence of God, I get, I get his presence with my praise. If he inhabits the praises and I want his presence, I praise him. I want communion with him. I worship him. But when I want to be in his presence and I want him there, I praise him. When I get it, thank you, daughter. I want his attention. I praise him. Watch this. It doesn't say he inhabits the, the complaints. 
He, he does not inhabit our worries. He don't inhabit our care. The Bible says, cast your care on the Lord, for he cares for you. Everything that I'm dealing with, I give it to God so I can free myself up to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I, I believe that you cannot enter into true worship until after you have praise. Sometimes we say we got to build up. We're going to worship him first, and then we're going to go into a praise. But if I praise him, he shows up. Then I can pause and worship him. So the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. So I don't care what I'm dealing with. Somebody say, I'll find me a praise. It might start with a hand clap. Come on, somebody. It might start with a wave, but I'm going to find a praise because I need him to be where I am. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I need you, God. When it, when it get real hard, the, the craziest thing to us to do when it get real rough, when we got nothing else, just break out in a praise. Because, God, I need you. I need you in this situation. I cried about it. I've, I've complained about it. If I need you there, God, amen. Clap your hands, oh, ye people. Shout out to God with a voice of triumph. Oh, 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 no, no, my sin. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory, glory, oh my God, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh my God, the best time, the best time is, is when I don't feel like it, yeah. <laughs> Because, see, when you feel like it, that means, you know, you mustered it up. You, 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 you prime yourself into it. But when I don't feel like it, and I can find it in me to praise him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. They must say there's a praise on the inside yes. that I can't keep to myself. A holler stirring up from the depths of my soul. <laughs> so he said, excuse me if I seem a little giddy. Or maybe even strange. But praise. I say praise. Praise is the way. I change things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't like it. Change it. Praise is the way I change things. Hallelujah. Come on. Clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some people say, some people say, Apostle, when y'all say praise him, I, I don't really know how to do that dance. <laughs> the Bible says praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sultry and harp. Praise him with a trembling dance. Praise him with a string instrument and organ. Praise him on the loud cymbals. Praise him on the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath. You got breath in your body? Praise him. Hallelujah. You, you know, you, you just won. You just won hallelujah way. <laughs> Cause, Cause, the enemy, it, when the enemy, the Bible say, the Bible say, when the enemy comes in, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. That standard is the block. The standard is like when you see a, a dam blocking water. When the enemy comes in like a flood, my praise causes a standard to be lifted. <laughs> It causes a standard to cover my family. Come on, somebody. It causes a standard to cover my life. Come on here. Amen. When I praise him, dear God, hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know what I'm going to do? Hallelujah. I, I'm gonna take. I want to take about. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give y'all about 15 seconds. 
whatever your praise is, if it's clapping, if it's jumping, I'm going to give you about 15 seconds to give God your praise so he can go ahead and get in that place you need him to be. One, two, three, come on, praise. Somebody needs to know it's in your praise. I'm going to preach in a minute. personal. It's for you. Although your praise might spark somebody else, it's not for them. Your praise is for you. <laughs> oh yeah. I need you, God. Somebody say, I need you, God. Hallelujah. All right. I don't know why y'all was holding that. But there's a praise on the inside you can't keep to yourself. Hallelujah. Your praise, your praise will break some stuff off of you. It'll break some stuff off of your family. Oh God. The Bible says, let everything that have breath. Let everything that have breath. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> This is what we call unassisted praise. Nobody is singing you through it. Nobody is coaching you through it. You know you need it. Amen. It's between you and God. Unassisted praise. I give you glory, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
the enemy, the enemy would love to shut your mouth. Bring it down, so Hallelujah. Send it over. Bring it down. Thank you, Jesus. The enemy would love to shut your mouth when you're sitting on a praise. Some, some people sit there and they just rock and they do something, but they're all of your reaction to let God know, God, I need you right here. And if your word is true and you inhabit, you come into abide in the midst of my praise, in the midst of my cry, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him so I don't get frustrated. I'm going to praise him so I don't say nothing that will take me away from him. Come on, somebody. This too, God. I'm going to give that to you too. Come on. And then I'm going to give him praise him. If it ain't nobody clapping in my hands. Even this, God, I'm still going to praise you. See, sometimes you don't have time for the dance. You don't have time to lift your hands. But you always got time for a clap. Okay, God, I see what's going on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, settle yourselves. Come on, settle yourselves. Hallelujah. Father, we praise and we thank you for a moment of praise. We honor your presence in this place. Now, God, we pause and break open your word. Even now, God, that the atmosphere is even more clear than before. Give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, but most of all, spirits to contain your word. We thank you now. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Our virtual family. If you got your praise on just somebody, just say, I need you, God, in that virtual church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for everyone in respective places. Amen. I just felt the need to let y'all know, man. I don't know about you, but when I got up this morning, I didn't pray. You may be seated. Amen. If you can. I didn't pray my normal prayer. I didn't do my normal routine. I asked God. I said, your will. I just said your will today. You know, because sometimes we go away and we refresh ourselves. <clears throat> we coming back and we continue the same course of action that we were doing. The same routine that we were doing before. And if you had to get away to go rest and recuperate or rest and relax or refresh yourself, why go back and do the same thing over again? The time away is the time for you to ask God for new strategies and new plans and to clear your thoughts and clear your mind that you can be effective in all that you do. And I believe that I praise God for those who have shown up today. I didn't ask God. I didn't pray my prayer. God, let the house be full. Put everybody. I said, God, whoever be there, let them be there. But let them come ready. Hallelujah. Because I believe, amen, that, that there's, we're in a time where the enemy is tricking the church. He's tricking believers or churchgoers. He's tricking them, and he, he's got them to a place where they've settled. That people will go everywhere they want to go, but they're making an excuse not to show up in the house of God. You know, you can catch COVID in Walmart, but people go to Walmart, they go to movies, they go everywhere they want to go. But they make excuses. I'd rather do it from home. And that shows a level of a commitment to God. And I'm going to talk about that today. Amen. I thank God for all of you. I thank God for our praise team. Thank you all for that beautiful worship today. Amen. Give God a hand praise for this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I just need you all to know God is moving. God is yet performing promises. If you, if you haven't had any type of challenges Amen. Then something you all just don't want to all be fearful. If nothing ain't been going on in your life, you know, you, you, your spouse ain't had a couple of sharp words or, you, you know, you, something ain't happened, something that shifted you or make you redirect your energy to God, your focus to God. Amen. Then the enemy got you where he needs you. Amen. But if you've been having just some, some challenges somewhere, you had to go back and redo some things. They'll let you know, amen, that you, you got God's attention. And when you get God's attention, you have the enemy's attention as well. And so, amen, I want you all to know that. I thank God for all of you. I thank God for my beautiful wife, amen, my best friend in the whole world. <laughs> Hallelujah. For going away and spending time with me, man, I'm telling you. And we plan to already go again, y'all, amen, because, hallelujah, it's so needful. And, and I told her, I was telling her, I think I was talking to Pastor Napazo. I said, I wouldn't get up in the morning doing devotion and the prayers I normally do. I just get up and know, like, thank you for another day cover my children, my family, all that pertains to me. 
and I'm going to enjoy some time because God knows our heart. Amen. God knows our heart. I just ask God to help me continue to keep my heart committed to him. Committed to him. If I can do that, I can do all the other things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, we're truly blessed. I thank God for her. And uh, we brought our other grandbaby down, Sunshine. And just let her spend some time down uh, to get away. She's been trying to get some time with her cousins and all that. I said, well, uh, you missed that, but we're going to take you away for a little while. And she came back and tried to stuff her bag with snacks so she can bring to her cousins. I said, no. Everybody going to have their snacks. Y'all just be... Y'all be good to each other. Amen. Don't buy friends and all that stuff. But she don't want people to feel bad because she went away, you know. So, But it happens. Sometimes everybody can't go. Amen. But again, I appreciate all of you in your respective places. We're going to go into the Word. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be finished. I don't want to preach long or teach long. I'm, I'm learning to do what God said to do and to minister to God has, that has an ear for that Word. Amen. And so, um, again... Y'all notice that we didn't put anything to say, welcome back. I didn't do none of that. I said, whoever's going to come, we're going to come. You know, we know we got to come back. <laughs> you know, grown people do what grown people are supposed to do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say the mature, the mature church. Do what we're supposed to do. do don't need a reminder that we be, need to be at church on Sunday. We don't need, no. Nah. That that's what spoil people. And they look for it. I'm not going to spoil you. Amen. Glory to God. You either get it, you either get it or you don't. Amen. Hungry people show up to eat. Come on. Hungry people show up to eat. And they, they know where to get fed at. And don't nobody get mad, but I think sometimes virtual churches like fast food. You know, you can eat it on the move. Amen. And keep on going. You be in the living room, still here. I heard what it said, but you're in the living room. Then you don't went to the other room and you're missing parts of the word. And uh, I thank God for our virtual family. But if you're local, amen. We would love to see you in the house. Amen. Glory to God. If you those that are in virtual family, stay in one place and listen with your family. Amen. Stop the children from moving. Turn all the devices and different things off so you can hear the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Grab your Bibles. Let me get into this. I, I, I asked for a time limit today for my wife to get me up at a certain time. And uh, y'all went to acting crazy and shouting and running all over the church. Huh? I know what time I got up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalms 37 is where we're going today. We were teaching and preaching on uh, remembering God. And if we fail not, not to remember, we fail to remember. And we talked last time. We didn't finish the topic on obeying God, you know, committed. We're talking about, talking about obeying God and remembering and obeying the results that come from that. We're going to continue that series down the road. But God shifted me this morning. And he said, a lot of people are not remembering because they have not committed. They have not committed. We're going to talk a little bit about that for probably the next 30 minutes or so. And we're going to move. Psalm 37, verse number 5. And for the sake of honoring the word, I want you to go ahead and stand again. I like that sound I had. So I can hear myself up here, man. I like to hear. I can sound. I like how, sound, how that sound. We don't need the echo, but the sound. Psalm 37. Five through nine. And the word of God, let's, let's read it together. We're reading from the King James Version. It says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Y'all see that? He shall bring it to pass. Whatever your it is. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Then it says what? Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Not in the Lord's way, but in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. The first three words in that text say commit, it says commit thy way. The first part of that say commit thy way unto the Lord. If I read that in the New, and I'm going to deal particularly, amen, this morning with the first couple of verses. I'm not going to be able to get all the way down, but I want to give you something to hold on to and something to keep your thought process thinking about your commitment to God. Amen. Somebody say we need to be committed. Somebody put that in the chat for me. We need to be committed. Amen. It says 
The New Living Translation says, commit everything you do. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust in him and he will help you. So committing, committing to God it also involves trust. It also involves trust. When I give it to him, I got to trust him with it. Somebody say, when I give it to him, I got to trust him with it. Whatever that issue may be, whatever is troubling me, whatever I'm believing God for, the promotion, the increase, health-wise, whatever I commit to him, I got to trust him with it. So what does that mean? When I give it to him, I don't go back and try to get it when God does not move in my time frame. Tell your neighbor, say, don't put a time limit on God. I truly believe there is a time for God to do a thing. But I believe it's based upon our expectation and our commitment. Somebody shouts, you got to be committed. Come on, y'all got to talk to me today now. He says, he says, commit everything you do to the Lord. So whatever I'm thinking about, whatever I'm dealing with, I got to commit this thing to God. If I want God results, if I want God results, I got to commit it to God. Amen. I think I was looking in some of my notes from the earlier part of the year. In the first quarter, I think it was around February, I talked about having a heart to commit. Having a heart to commit. Having a heart to commit. And, and God took me back to that word to bring it together because, amen, we can be talking about obeying God and, and remembering God and all this. We can remember God and all this, but when we don't commit, all that is vain. It's, it's, it's worthless. Amen. It's like the church. It's, the Bible says, amen, if a, when a man sits down the bill, he must first count up the cost. As he have, if he have enough to finish it or if he's willing, not just talking about material to finish, does he have enough commitment to finish? And, uh, uh, endurance. Commitment brings endurance. Amen. So when we start talking about committing, God is asking us, amen, where is your commitment? Where is your commitment? Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust in him and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiant like the dawn. And the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday. It said, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently on him for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Don't not, do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. Then it says, for the wicked will be destroyed. But those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Somebody say, I'm about to possess the land. <laughs> Bible tells us, in, in Isaiah says, if we're willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. I'm about to possess the land. I'm talking today about making a commitment. I know somebody was looking at, I know DeAndre was waiting on that one. Make a making a commitment to be fully committed. Y'all catch that. Making a commitment... To be fully, not sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes level to the ground. Even when I'm level, I'm fully committed. My good days, bad days, fully committed. You for me or against me, fully committed. Because it's, it is my commitment that's going to yield the harvest of every seed that I've sown. When I'm sowing seed, amen, but I'm not committed, I delay my harvest. Oh, y'all hearing me? So if I can do all the right stuff, but I'm not committed to him. I'm not saying you're perfect. But when I'm committed, when I mess up, I don't say messed up. Catch that. When I miss the mark, amen, I don't stay in a missed place. I repent quickly and return unto the Lord. Amen. Uh, commitment is a matter of the heart. My first note I want you to write down, commitment is a matter of the heart. So we ask ourselves, you have to ask ourselves, what have we committed ourselves to? Where is our heart? Y'all still here? Yeah. When it comes to the kingdom, when it comes to the kingdom, many of us fall way, way short on the commitment scale. We've committed to, to positions in church. We've committed to assignments. We've committed to our jobs, amen. We committed to making a paycheck, amen. But when it comes to committing to the kingdom, when it comes to committing to God, we fall way, way short. We commit to titles, but we haven't committed to God. The evidence is there, and our commitment is when we get offended. 
We get offended and our time is short. We get offended and we don't show up. We get offended in a conversation, amen, and we get quiet because we committed to the person, but we have not committed to God. The Bible tells us in Matthew, I believe it is, 6 and 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. <laughs> where your investment is, your treasure, the thing you value the most. He said, wherever that is, that is where your heart, amen, your, the thing that holds you, the thing that keeps you, that's where your heart is going to be. Wherever your heart is, there will your, that's where your commitment is at. Y'all still with me? That's why people move so fast in, diff in different phases in life, because they didn't commit from the heart. They committed with their mouth, <laughs> their heart. <laughs> the scripture says these people worship me with their mouths and they honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. So I see you jumping, I see you praising, I see you hucking and bucking. But where is your heart? When God was dealing with me this week, he said, where is your heart, Senator? I said, God, my heart is with you. He said, is it in all areas of your life? And I began to search my life, and I found out there were some ways I had committed myself to, but I haven't committed my heart to, or I haven't committed all the way to God. If I'm doing something, I say, you're talking real good right now. Because where my heart is. I don't care what challenges that thing. I'm committed to it. You say some stuff. See, people come at you sideways, but if your heart is committed to it, you get ready to say some stuff, and then your heart is saying, uh-uh, don't say that. Somebody said your heart will save you. You want to go off? And your heart says, uh-uh. Because you, you committed this thing to God. I read throwing the towel. Uh -uh. God, it hurt. I got you. See, sometimes it's hard to believe what God is saying. Vengeance is mine. I will repay it. Okay, God, when are you going to repay it? Because we don't see God doing it. We don't know how God is doing it. We have an idea of how we want him to do it. But his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. When, when people do us wrong, we want them to hurt as bad as we hurt. And God might just simply block a blessing from coming their way, but y'all want them to feel the pain that you felt. Because your heart, amen, is, your commitment, amen, is to revenge instead of to God. Okay, commit, commit. Give them some definitions. I got a few. Amen. Somebody say commit. Amen. We look about, we talk about words, the word commitment. Watch this. Commitment is the act of committing, pledging, or engaging oneself. It is the act. Not just verbal. I'm into this. I'm moving into this. Commitment, commitment is just like love. <laughs> love is a what? Action word. If somebody say they yeah, love you and they're acting crazy, you say, show me. I hear what you're saying, but I, I, I see what you're doing. Commit. Commitment, the act of committing pledging or engaging oneself. I want to focus particularly on the word commit, means to bind or obligate, as by pledge or assurance. When I commit my ways unto God, when I commit my way unto the Lord, I bind myself to him, I obligate myself to his ways, and I trust him with my process. I bind myself to him. I trust, I trust him in many ways. I, I'm, I trust the process, and I submit everything I have to him, even if he's not moving in my timing. Here's, my, here's, the, here's the issue. Here's the issue. Sometimes I get, I get and I know y'all don't do this, because so y'all say long better than I am. Y'all good and say. Sometimes I get frustrated with God. Come on, tell the truth. And then I pray. I say, God, I'm frustrated with you. Y'all ain't never said that to God. God, I'm angry. God, this hurt. God, I'm, I'm, God I, I've even told God, I'm angry with you. It don't do no good. But I just like to express my feelings to the Lord. 
Because the Bible is not, it's not, thank you, babe. It's not, it's not a sin to be angry. The Bible says be angry, but sin not. Now, I'm not going to do this dumb and say thing evil against God. I'm just going to let God know I'm disappointed. God, I thought you would have handled this by now. God, I sowed a seed for this, God, but you haven't moved on it. Amen. And so, God, I'm ready to change it. But God said, are you committed to the process? See, when God get ready to stretch the church, the real church, when God get ready to stretch his people, the ones that's going to make a difference, difference in this dispensation, amen, where we're trying to leverage the physical and the virtual church, amen, some people have... have uh, resided themselves or pull themselves back to just, just sit back and let it happen. But God is looking for some people who's going to make it happen by moving in his timing. And everything ain't going, it's not going to be like we want it to be. Amen. To pledge. To pledge. A solemn promise. So not only am I in a binding agreement, but I made a solemn promise. <laughs> when I went to the altar, and see a lot of people gave the right hand of fellowship, but they didn't give their heart. The Bible says, confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart. A lot of us have confessed with our mouths, but our heart didn't, didn't cross the line. The heart said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean I got to do all this? Commitment shows in our actions. We may pledge a thing. See, commitment is part of those two words. It's, 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 it's committing, pledging, or engaging. My commitment, those three things, they're part of commit, Commitment. Committing, I make a commitment with my a verbal commitment or, or, or my actions. Amen. Then I pledge, I make a solemn a promise or agreement. I make an agreement with God. I make an agreement. When I got married, amen, uh, July 25th, 1989, I made an agreement with God and with Valencia. In sickness and in health, for rich or poor. To death do us part. Y'all not hear me? And I say, well, now that last part, I said, no, you don't kill me, I ain't going to try to kill you. That ain't what that means. He's talking about natural. But I made a promise, and even when, if she's not keeping her part, or I'm not keeping our part, I still made that commitment to God. Y'all still here? Church real quiet now. Anything I commit myself to as a believer, I bring God into the commitment with me. Because I'm his representative, I'm an ambassador. We like to be ambassadors when we're doing great things, going overseas and doing all these great missions. But on the simple things in life, we don't want to be an ambassador for Christ. We quit. You can let people walk out of your life, but you don't have to walk away. You do your part. Someone tell somebody, say, you do your part. When you do your part, you can feel good about you did your part. How many do your part and the other person act crazy? You can get, God, this ain't fair. Tell the truth. God, this ain't fair. I don't like this right here. If they don't do that, God said, wait a minute. Yeah. Sometimes we make a commitment to stuff God didn't even, didn't even authorize. We liked it for the moment. We jumped in and committed. God said, hey, hey, I'm, he's trying to tell you this ain't what I have for you, but you jump in it anyway. Yeah. Take that job because they make they promise more money. You take that job and they take you away from God. Come on. That's why I tell people, find a career. You find a career, amen, you can do something that you have a passion for. Even when the money's not right, you can still do it because you have a passion for it. You, make, you commit to your passion. Amen. You say, where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. Yeah. Amen. Where I place my investment. Yeah. Return on investment. Amen. When I put an investment in something, amen, that's where my heart is going to be. Amen. Matthew 6 and 21 says in the Message Bible, says, it is obvious, isn't it? Yeah. The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be. Wherever your heart is at, that's the place you're going to want, most want to be. That's why I start praying that people will come back to church because their heart is not in it. They'll come back and they'll commit to the man of God or the woman of God. They'll commit to an assignment. What do you need me to do? I don't need you to do anything but get your, your soul saved. People don't like that part right there. Well, he, he didn't give me nothing to do. Get saved. Get saved. Then ask God, what do you need to do? Yes. Yes. If you really commit to God, oh. he's going to he tell you to start in the area of hospitality. Yes. Yes. Ooh, glory. Church full of prophets and apostles and evangelists, but nobody want to serve. Ooh, they commit to a title, Jesus. but they don't commit to God. 
our commitment to God show, amen, when we, show, when we have adversity in our life. And then we start quitting. We shrink back. Fully. Didn't I say something about fully? Fully. 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 Now, if you wrote no definition right there. Fully. It's making, a, making a commitment to be fully committed. Fully means entirely. Or wholly. Holy. Complete. Complete. Earth thing. You mean God, I do it. It ain't halfway in. Halfway out. And I told God, I was telling God, amen, when I was floating in that water, I said, God, I'm really committed to making things happen for my family. And I said, but sometimes they just get on my nerves. Amen. This is how I was talking to God. I was being real. When I say my family, I'm talking about my whole family. Everybody. Now, I said I'm not going to make them do something, but I'm going to set it up so they can get it done. God said put the things in place. Commitment causes for you, watch this, to put the right things in place, the right tools in place, and make it available. It's just like I have instructions here. I say, hey, Chris and Fatima, this is what you need to do to be successful. And I'm going to put it right here. And Chris said, I got it. But he never picks it up and read it. Come on. Come on. Y'all still with me? I'm almost finished. Like some of y'all like I get upset. Our heart will go where our greatest investment has already gone. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will want to be and end up being. Our heart, our commitment will go, amen, where our greatest investment has already gone. Where I put in the most time in. Where I'm looking for the greatest return. Y'all better talk to me. I can say a lot with my mouth, but wherever I put my most time in, where, wherever I am looking for the greatest return, that's where my heart is going to go. That's why so many people get disappointed, because they spend too much time investing in the wrong stuff. And they end up investing in takers and not givers. They can end up spending time with consumers and not producers. They don't understand that relationship and commitment is a give-give situation. So if I'm sowing into your life, you ought to be sowing into my life. There ought to always be an exchange. And so if you find yourself in a relationship where there's no exchange, if you're committed to something and you're always giving, you're always giving, trying to make somebody else better, and you never give anything back in return, you need to cut it off. You need to cut it. I don't know if that's right for the, for the church. Oh, you know, I heard that on the radio, but I don't know. That's a song, isn't it? That's right, though. It's good? Okay. Y'all know I don't know. It's not a church song, though. <laughs> okay, I got it. But I'm putting it in the right place. Okay. I got one on each side. They're going to keep me straight. Amen. Fully. So making a commitment. Watch this. Making a commitment, making an act of committing, pledging, or engaging myself, or, or binding myself, or obligating myself by a solemn promise or agreement to be entirely or wholly engaged in what I say God has called me to do. Whether it's church, my family, Everything that pertains to me, God, I'm making a commitment to be fully engaged. Then I can remember God. Then I can obey God. Then I can mature when I'm fully committed. Fully commitment is that vitamin, is that essential vitamin that I need on a daily basis. God, I feel it. It is the essential vitamin. Some of you know, I don't know if everybody takes vitamins and supplements, but there's some people that need that particular multivitamin daily or their body won't function right. I can tell when I'm on a downside. Give me a tissue, please. I can tell when, I'm, when, I, when I take supplements, I take them for a few weeks and then I take a week off. And by the end of that week off, I can tell that I haven't been on that supplement. I have to adjust my body, adjust my routines. So that I can still function. So my heart. Somebody said, well, my, wherever my heart is, that's, my, that's where my greatest investment is. 
I make great investments in my family. I make great investments in my wife, my children, my church family. So I have to learn, y'all need to write this, to prioritize my priorities. Because everything I choose as a priority might not be the number one priority. And if I don't adjust, I try to commit to everything and won't give anything a full commitment. So if I put it in an order, write the vision, make it plain. If I put it in an order, if I have, amen, organization to my life, amen, then I can pursue these things in order and not get frustrated. Y'all still with me? Our heart will grow where our greatest investment has already gone. Amen. Your life, your life. Number one, your life is a reflection of your heart. It's a reflection of your heart. Where you are now is a reflection of where your heart has already been. And now we're trying to get back from something because we let our heart slip one way too far. Or we did too much. We put too much into something or someone. Amen. And we neglected ourselves. We, we didn't engage our commitment. Your commitment alone was going off saying, uh, uh, too much, too much, uh, uh, too much, too much. And you just kept going. It was says, pull back, pull back, pull back. You just kept going, kept going. And all of a sudden, you found yourself depleted. And you looked up and said, they're not giving nothing back. Now you're frustrated. You're trying to call God in. God said, I was telling you the whole time. Turn the switch off. You're giving too much. You're doing too much. You're not going to get that back. That was for this time frame. It was for, for, you supposed to be committed to that for three months. You committed a whole year into it. Now you lost nine months. You can't get it back. <laughs> and now you think they're going to come back. God, yeah, how am I going to get that? God said, I, said, I cut that investment off. You kept on doing it. It wasn't yielding a return. You kept on putting it in there. The craziest thing to do is invest in something that you know is not going to yield a return. Sometimes you invest at the wrong time. Come on. You can miss something. You were too late. You saw the perfect season to be a part of something, to be involved in something, but you waited to see what other people were going to do. Come on. You watch everyone else, but you didn't listen to God. Those of us that invest was investing online, uh, AMC, about a year ago, AMC, this uh, entertainment theater, AMC was yielding some great stuff back. Yeah. I was sitting there watching it and watching it. Yeah. Then when I invested in it, it was too late. Yeah. Now I'm still waiting to get my money back. I'm going to take it out. I, I got to wait till it flip again. Because <laughs> I got too much in there. Now, now, now Brother Rashad was like, Brother Rashad was like, man, I put my money in there and man, it flipped back. Somebody said, don't, don't miss the time. God will alert you. There's, there's some people in your life, I'm telling you right now, there's some people in your life, God is telling you to cut them off for this season. Because they haven't done anything what you've already put in them. If they're going to get something out, tell them, dig into what I've already put in. You got seed in you, go and find it. See, so y'all think this is me. Well, you going to just cut them off? No, I'm just going to let them find what's already in them. Amen. Your heart is a reflection. Your, your life is a reflection of your heart. I'm going to finish in, in this point right here. I'm not going to keep you long. Amen. Your conversation is a reflection of your heart. Y'all better catch this. You want to know what person's heart is at towards you? Make them mad at you. Get them mad. <laughs> the hardest thing to tell somebody that's expecting something from you is no. That's a complete sentence. Everybody say that. Somebody say no, it's a complete sentence. You don't need a whole lot of words. No, period. Sometimes exclamation point. Don't have to add nothing to no. I know sometimes you feel like adding stuff to the front of no. But just, just no. Somebody say just no is good. Your conversation is a reflection of your heart. When you begin to regulate how you deal with people, their conversation will change with you. You can love them, and, but you still have to deal with them appropriately because they can drain you. Yeah. 
My wife and I made commitment to people, and, and, and out of our heart, out of the goodness of our heart, it started as, as a God thing, but out of the goodness of our heart, we just stayed committed, and we knew the whole time, hey, amen, baby, something's funny about this. This ain't going right, but we just keep on doing, so stay faithful, keep on doing what you're told to do until you do something else. God said, no, cut it off. After that first time you get burned, second time, I said, God said, if, this, if the third time it came out like this, God said, if this go this way, this is what you do. As soon as it went left, the person said, I said, we done. What do you mean? I said, I'm going to send you a letter to explain the whole thing to you. You're not just going to quit. No, we're not quitting. You didn't, you didn't uh, meet the obligation. You didn't commit. You, you, you violated our agreement. You voided it. Ain't no second and third chance. I told you up front. So if I tell you this is what I'm going to do, and you do this right here, when I say, okay, we're done, well, why are you acting like that? Didn't I tell you up front? Let me tell you all a little secret about me, about me myself. And this ain't no church thing. I'm not the type of person to try to prove something to somebody. I say, okay, if you do this, this is what I'm going to do. Ain't right, right, baby. If this is what I'm going to do. He said, why he ain't talking to me no more? I said, what did I tell you? But you didn't give no warning. The warning was the conversation. That's why the church ain't ready to grow up. The church is not ready to be stretched because they want somebody to beg and plead them to commit to God. The Bible said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I'm going to give you the word. You got to do the rest. Yes. Your conduct. I said your conversation. Your conduct. We say conduct conversation is the same. Your conduct is how I carry myself. It is a reflection of your character. Your character is a reflection of your commitment. <laughs> Your character, your conduct, when you're by yourself, you know, how you act when there's no accountability. Mm. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he should bring it to pass. A lot of stuff ain't coming to pass because you haven't committed. Your private conduct is suspect. I want to preach an encouraging word today. I hope I'm encouraged. I want, I want... Uh, when, when, when something happens in my life, I want to be able to celebrate and not look over my shoulder. Now somebody gets something new and they be wanting to celebrate, but they know they did it shady. They cut a deal behind the scene. Then they be clapping like this. <laughs> Hope nobody didn't see them cut that deal. Your decisions. Your life is a reflection of your heart. Your conversation is a reflection of your heart. Your conduct is a reflection of your heart. Your decisions is a reflection of your heart. That's number four. Let me get one more. And I'm going to be on, pausing it here. I'm going to find a place to park. Hallelujah. Why are we talking about my decisions? Because my commitment to God is going to affect my decision. When somebody angers me, Anybody got that revenge, that revenge nerve still in you? Got that revenge uh, gene yeah. still in your body? Yeah. You be wanting to get them back? Yeah. It's the quiet ones I really be concerned about because you don't ever know what quiet people going to do. <laughs> the loud person in the room, you know, I'm not even worried about the loud person. You know, they already, they tell everything, but it's the quiet one. And one of them, you be on the them, they be like, no, Denzel Washington, one of my favorite actors in every movie, when he get ready to do something, especially a gangster movie, he say, my man. <laughs> They're like, I'm getting ready to get you, dude. <laughs> it's, it's, when, when, when you start doing stuff, your, your decisions affect how you do things. When you make a decision based upon how I can get back and make you feel like I felt, it's come on. I'm going to stop doing this because you stop doing it. God will have you giving it. Now, here's the other side of that commitment. God will have you giving to people that's not giving back for a season to test their character. But we got to be sensitive enough to hear him when he say, cut it off. People start judging you. People start living out of your refrigerator. They will. They be gauging your bank account. Y'all love to cook for you. Be going to your house for something. Now, who told you to come out my house? 
The last thing, your giving is a reflection of your commitment. Are y'all still with me? Now, 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 church folk, when I say giving, they first are, now you even talk about money. I'm talking about your time, your talent, and your capital. A lot of people won't go to church because they think the church won't ask for money. And then people start giving as much in this church because they say they paid the church off. We sure did. 12-year mortgage, we, a 30-year mortgage in 12 years. Excellent. To God be all the glory. Not to Senator and Valencia, not to the Lucas, and not to nobody, not, not to no, to God be all the glory. God made a way for that because we were committed. Fully committed. God said, amen, when you fully commit to me, he said, I do big things in small spaces. Your giving, time, talent, and your capital. When I'm in serving on my time, I'm not complaining about who's not there. When I'm saying I'm committing to God, I'm committing to the church, amen, I'm not complaining about who's not there. I, know, I hope she don't get mad. I came into church one day, the church smelled so good, man. I said, man, I started walking around. I said, who been here? I said, I told my wife, babe, I bet Sister Lisa been at church. She ain't told nobody nothing. I didn't know nothing. She just asked for the key and come in and do what she needs to do and go. And half of us don't even know that she's, she's been doing it. Because she's not broadcasting it. So, all, so most of us got to be put on a roster. Go to the bathroom, go to the restroom and see toilet paper all over the floor. Uh, my name ain't on the roster. That ain't no commitment. That's not my assignment. Boy. Y'all quiet at me. Water in the flow. Jumping over it. Go get a mop. I get, I get, I get, help me, Lord. I'm looking for the words now. I ask God to help me commit my tongue, my response to foolery. Because when I see stuff like that and then people talking about they love the Lord, you, you love him when it's beneficial for you. You love what he does for you, but you don't love him. I have to tell folks, if I didn't love God, I would have stopped doing this a long time ago. Real pastoring is, is it's rough. Think about if you had to pastor a church full of people like yourself. Deal with five of you riding in the car going somewhere together. Not just different personalities. Deal with five of yourself. And your different emotions that hungry you. That irritated you. Come on. Not, not just the one that's feeling good, but the different emotions that you have, deal with five of yourself. Because I don't, I don't like the hunger. I don't like the hunger me myself. I don't like the irritated me. I don't like that myself. When I feel it coming on, I'll be like, man, let me go somewhere by myself, find something to eat. Go sit in the corner and get it right. Because I want to make a commitment to God. I want to act right. Let me finish this. Amen. <laughs> Here it is. Commit thy way, thy heart. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust in him. He will help you. The scripture says, he said he will bring it to pass. Here's the test. Where is the it in this, in this text for me? What am I believing God for right now? That's not happening. Is it not happening because I haven't committed it to it? Is it not happening because I give it to him? Amen. And he don't move fast enough. I go back and get it. Is it not happening because, amen, I haven't fully cast my care for it on the Lord? Cast your care on the Lord for he cares for you. Am I trying to carry it by myself? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, if you come up to me, he said, if you give me what I need, if you give it to me, he said, I got you. God gave me a word. I didn't want to go on live for nothing, but God gave me a word, amen, to share after my birthday. And, 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 and September 1st, he told me to tell people, amen, they got to be consistent, they got to be faithful. And what was that third? Obedient, consistent, and faithful. And he told me, and shared it where I got excited. And so I said, 
t maybe tell the people she was doing talking to somebody about something. I said, tell them I'm, I'm going to go on later and share a word. And so as we got late in the evening, I started finding, trying to find a place to share the word, trying to sit down. And God said, not yet. People were sowing into our life financially. And I was thanking God for the finances that were coming in. They were doing great things. And then he said, not yet. And so at the end of the day, my intellect said, God, it looked like I lied because I said, I'm going to do it today. And he told me the next morning, he said, attach a seed to it. A seed? I'm not asking nobody to give me anything. He said, ask them to sow it to you, not to your church. It's not, it's not, he says, not for the church. It's for what your projects that you're doing. I don't want you to take it out of your own finances. I said, now, God, you, this is me talking about. You really think I'm going to tell the people that I got the money, but you don't want me to spend all my money. He said, are you committed to me? So I sit over there in the chair and wrestle with the thing, and I set the thing up to set it alive. Did I mess it up because I didn't want to go right away? Then I started moving around. God said, now. I said, baby, let me, I got to go ahead and do this live. He said, okay. <laughs> and then I said, it's going to be a few minutes. End up being 40 minutes. Because I'm going to say it real quick and get out of the way because I want to see people's response. I ain't want nobody to think I need anything. God said, it's not even about you. Then when it departs, he said, tell them it's not for the church. See, people so in the church, they can get a return. You know, they think they're going, they think they're going, he says it's for you. I'm like, wow. I said, okay, this is what the Lord said. This is my project. Boom, boom, boom. He gave me these three words. And then he told me over the years, no matter what has happened, and you all have to eyewitness this, no matter what has happened in our life, big crowd, small crowd, Many little, we have steadily always progressed forward. Are y'all still hearing me? And so I said, God, I'm committing this thing to you. And now in, this, in going forward, whatever the Lord says to do, I'm committed to it because it's, it's not even about how people think about it. This is for some of you. There's some things God is telling you to do even for this church. And you worry about what other people are not going to do. Do what God tells you to do. Yeah. Fully committed. Yeah. Brother Green sitting over there don't say nothing when he comes to church. Y'all been on our website? <laughs> www.nlhop.org. He didn't say anything. He heard me talking about it. And sent me a text message. He said, Pastor, I, I gotta, can I talk to you when I get a chance? When you get a chance? And uh, you know me being a pastor and I know they married, they travel. I say, Lord, I hope ain't nothing going on in their marriage. <laughs> And then he called me, and he started talking to me. I was like, Phew. But I was emotional talking to him but just prior to his call. Another brother, a sergeant major, a retired sergeant major, called me and said, man, I miss you. I was about to cry on the phone. He said, it's your commitment, man. He said, I watch you and your, you and your wife go through stuff. Nobody know nothing about it. He said, but I watch y'all at a distance. He said, I Nicodemus you. I'm talking about somebody I admire watching my life. He said, I got to come down to Columbus and spend some time with you. Then he gave me some things to pray for, to pray about concerning his life. And then he said, you want to teach me how to golf? I said, no, man, they're going to be funny now. I said, but I commit to it. In the midst of that call, I'm talking to Brother Green right after that. I'm looking at God saying, when you commit to me, I got you. All your ways are going to be established. God will put people in place. But you got to be fully, wholly, entirely all in. And he'll bring it to pass. Now think about what you need God to do as we prepare to close. Glory to God. This is the last thing I'm going to say. Locate your treasure and you'll locate your heart. Locate your treasure. You will locate your heart. If your heart is scattered, if your heart is scattered, your treasure is probably scattered. You got your heart in every other thing but not what you need it to be in. The reason nothing is being accomplished in some of our lives because we spread ourselves out. We, we fooled ourselves like we can multitask and perfect multitasking. And you can't commit to that. Find out what God's called you to do because nothing significant happens in life without commitment. Your commitment is determine your future. You are going to become whatever you've committed to. You hear, you hear me? You're going to become whatever you committed to. 
Final scripture. We're standing. Romans 12 and 1, the Message Bible. Y'all listening? Romans 12 and 1 in the message. It says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary, ordinary life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God has for you or does for you is the best thing you could do for him. Stop trusting, putting all your trust in people. Put your trust in God. I think the hardest thing I've, had to, I've learned or people get to learn about me is I'm committed to God. I don't act funny with people when they walk out of my life. I just keep doing what God called me to do. I don't judge people. When they say it's God, when they say God told them to do something, I don't know what God said to them, but I know what God, what God said looks like. Some people saying that God said it don't look like, don't look like God, but you can't tell people. Come on. If somebody came up to me and said, God said, well, listen, my wife, they don't look like God. Because she's my wife. Somebody said that's their wife. That's my wife. If somebody said, God told me, you my husband, no, they don't look like God. If God said, God told me, you're supposed to give me uh, this much money. No, God didn't told you that because he would have told me too. Some stuff just plain sense, common sense, plain and simple. It don't have to be deep, but when your heart is committed to God, you're not tripped as often. You're not surprised as often. Your sensory, your, 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 your discernment, I won't say sensory, your discernment is sharper when you fully commit to God. Y'all hear me? I see it before it happens. God will show you stuff and you won't even believe it's coming from that person. And it's still, it happened to you because you don't, you don't believe it's coming from them. Come on. And when you trust God, God will trust the process what God's going to bring you through. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, we honor you. We thank you for the word you've allowed us to share in this place. Father, you said that your word would go out and not return unto you void, but it will accomplish that for which you sent it and will prosper in your thing that you sent it to. God, we've spoken corporately, but I know we receive individually. Now cultivate the heart, the ground, that this word is settled in. Let it be fertile, producing fruit in this season. We decree and declare that the enemy will not come and snatch this word that's just been sown. Not just in this physical room, but even in our virtual family. And God, we thank you for testimonies that should follow to people saying, I've made a commitment. I've rededicated my commitment to God. I've rededicated my life. I've rededicated myself to God. And God, as we trust you with all our heart, it will lead not to our own understanding. We choose to acknowledge you in all our ways and allow you to direct our paths. We give you praise now. We give you honor and glory. And we thank you for the victory in every area of our lives. We thank you for it in advance because it is a part of our heritage, Lord God. We thank you. We trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a hand, praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know everyone here love the Lord and have confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But if you, for any reason anyone needs prayer, salvation, we want to pray for you today. Or if you are in a backslidden condition, we want to return to the Lord. We want to pray for you today as well. If you're in our chat room, same thing for salvation. We always place a one in our chat box or a two for rededication. If you have a special prayer request, let us know. We'll pray with you and pray for you. We're still trying to practice social distancing, but if you want someone to pray with you, if you come to the altar and want someone to pray with you and pray for you, somebody will meet you at the altar today and pray with you. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
I understand that commitment is a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. Wherever you lay your, your commitment at, that's where your heart is at. And the thing we have to guard against is having a divided heart. What I mean by that, you can't fully commit to so many things at once. You got, you got to encapsulate things. Family, you got to be in there. Everything that's a part of your family. You can't choose one person over the next. You got to commit to the whole, the whole, the outcome of the whole. So, but um, I wanted to just, for those of you who did not hear the word on September the 1st, please go back and listen. I'm telling you, I've heard our man of God flow prophetically. I knew it came from the mouth of God. I knew it came from the heart of God. I, I really, I literally saw him wrestle within himself, fighting himself, down there trying to relax and trying to put it off. But God gave him a specific time. And um, what I heard, it really ministered to me right there in the room. But I also wanted to just challenge you to, to share that word. I'm telling you, we're already touching. we already gone further than these four walls. And the more you hear and obey and share with somebody and somebody share with somebody, a lot of times it's not so much as us getting things and keeping them for ourselves or making it be about ourselves. It's beyond us. Amen. And, and I keep hearing what our son preached on last week, have we forgotten already? The Bible said the kingdom suffered violence and the violence. I, I saw, and I saw my, my granddaughter not intentionally doing it, but she was being used to try to frustrate me and distract me just this morning, you know, sitting over there. And I was like, oh, my gee, come on. And it's like all of a sudden after I pressed and just got up and just said, God, I give you glory. Even in this, he said, this is what it's going to require for the manifestation of what I promised. You got to be so not just intentional, but determined. And most of all, he said, obedient, consistent, and faithful. Those were the three words that God spoke, and it just resonated in my spirit. And a lot of times, my obedience, Fatima, it don't come when everything is going good. My obedience is, is committed when, when it's hard, when it's challenging. When you don't want to say nothing, when you, you hurt, like he said, when you're angry, and it's like you, you want to stop right there and say, God, why? You don't even want to keep account. Come on. I mean, you want to keep account, but like, God, I said I'm sorry the last time. Uh, come, come on. Why? I had to start the conversation. Things like that. So I, I just wanted to get up. If you did not hear the word that our man of God released on Thursday, September the 1st, go back, look on his timeline and, 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 and revisit that word obedient consistent and faithful and what God said it starts in your first ministry most of us are out of order and we're holding up stuff because we're coming to places like this and groups of people and trying to have it together in that environment but the first environment that is fertile that is fruitful and that is conducive to produce it starts at home charity the love of God the proving of your obedience and your commitment to God it starts at home and we left amen South Carolina uh, desiring to ask God every day what's the protocol of my life for today when you understand that there's a protocol according to you living the kingdom life, you know you can't live any kind of way. And once you commit to fully commit that even what God requests of you is not too hard because he don't ask us of a hard thing. We only ask of him a hard thing. But when we ask for it, we're asking for his wisdom to know how to handle it when he give it to us because it's already ours. So I just wanted to just admonish you. It's not even about, but the people that I just speak blessings right now for every person that immediately obeyed the word from the time they heard. And some you could tell didn't take lightly. And, 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 the, and the commitment is 5 7 12 or $57. You can do it weekly or you can do it monthly. He asking people to commit. This is a commitment for where you are going, not where you are now. 
And God reminded me of our commitment of when my husband got ready to transition out of the military. God challenged me to start sowing above where we was already tithing. My husband looked at the tithes and he said, baby, we don't make this kind of money. I said, not right now. I'm not sowing for where we are. I'm sowing for where we're going. And your commitment is saying, God, if you're asking me for it, I don't see that I have it. But if you're asking me for it, that means you're going to give it to me to release it. My response is to be obedient, consistent, and faithful to do it. And I promise you, everybody that have committed in that form, God has never failed them. Prophetess Hallman was telling me about her testimony. She said, I didn't even have it. I didn't even see how I was going to get it. And she said, right when I committed to the pledge, she said, everything went wrong with my house. But because she didn't take her word back, she stayed obedient. She stayed consistent. She stayed faithful. God not only gave her the seed to meet the pledge, God fixed the house. And it looked, it's worth more than what it, come on here, somebody. And now she got a new, a new renter. Somebody say already. Because she stayed committed. And so I just wanted to challenge you. Y'all be blessed. Ask for God. I mean, all week long, I'm telling you, that word, that uh, uh, Pastor, oh, Jesus, Lord God, my son, yeah, Pastor Jamal preached that Sunday. Just to, every day I was asking God to not only take care of that so I could continue to do his business, but what you have for me to do in my marriage, when it comes to my family. Come on, because I found out I was doing too much. And it was with good intent, but it wasn't with God results. See, when it's with God intentions, it's going to give God results. Your good intentions ain't God intentions. And when you care enough to seek the will of God, even if you don't understand it, I promise you, you're going to get the God result. So get back committed to your commitment to stay fully, entirely, completely, consistent, obedient, and faithfully committed. Even when it hurt, it's a good hurt because God's going to heal every hurt. God bless you. Thank you for letting me stay. Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. And for those of you that desire prayer, you can stay for the remainder. Please come to to the altar with your mask on and we'll join our faith with you and for those amen you put your information in the inbox and someone will be amen gladly to respond to you immediately god bless you have a committed week have a faithful week have an obedient week have a consistent week father we just thank you for this gift the message and we even thank you even the more for the message we thank you for the atmosphere which is conducive to release and to receive. Now we thank you that your word has already gone out, oh God, and has landed on good ground and now is producing fruit after his own kind. Father, we thank you that the word is strong enough and powerful enough and quick enough to root up every weed, oh God, every tear that has been sown to smother it out. We thank you, Lord God, that we, oh God, are now walking in truth. God, we thank you for the faith to hear, to believe, and to receive, but most of all, to manifest. We bind every spirit of backlash, sabotage, and retaliation that will come against this word. We decree and declare apostolic and prophetic free flow that this word will go forth unhindered and unchecked and produce in every area of our lives. We thank you for an opportunity to recommit to the commitment to be fully committed with our whole heart, God, not just with lip service, but we thank you for the action that follows on this week. Now, Father, we speak blessings upon every household, every individual person under the sound of our voice, in the house and even in the live stream. We commit, oh God, to a week of total commitment that it will produce fruit, that it will be favorable in every area of our lives. Father, we thank you for the Jabez blessing. God, that you will bless us indeed, that you will keep your hand upon us, that you will enlarge our territory so no evil cannot harm us. God, we thank you now, God. And God, we just call forth a favorable evening. 
Let you go before us and make every crooked path straight. Bind up all accident, incident, hurt, harm, or danger. Keep us in the center of your will, letting us know that you are the center of our joy. All that is good and perfect come from you, Lord God, and that we walk in the fullness and the manifestation of all that you promised. We thank you for the super abundance that you're releasing in our lives right now, that we may go forth and continue to advance your kingdom. Keep us until we come together again. It is our prayer and we thank you that we yet believe if you don't do it it cannot be done and we give you praise for it now and we call it done in jesus name